Okay. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Um, I am doing this through Zoom for the first time. Um, and the reason I would like to do that is because I want to make sure that I can screen share. I don't think YouTube is able to do that, or I don't know how to do it yet with YouTube. So that's one thing. Um, I don't want to make this too long. I would like to keep it short and sweet. But uh, this is an, a response to somebody from YouTube that asked me to do something on child protection. So I would like to go into that and say, what is child protection? What does that mean? What does it mean to safeguard? There's so many aspects of child protection, safety and safeguarding that are really, really important to remember. And it's not always a negative thing. So let's look here first at what I have here. Okay, I am going to go to this. Here. Okay, so I'm gonna go back. Oops. Oops, that's not what I wanted either. Oh yeah, okay. Oops, nope, 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 nope. That's not what I wanted either. Oh, wait, okay, let me go this way. Oh no, wait. Oh my goodness. <laughs> You don't know what you're doing ever. I know, it's just crazy, yeah? Okay, this is my first time doing this. So I hopefully it, I can get better as we go on. Okay, so child protection and safeguarding, it's a positive thing. Don't think of it as negative. Yes, there are some negative things that happen when we are looking at uh, protecting children, but for the most part, protecting children is supposed to be um, preventive. So that, that we don't think of it as something that's a negative thing. So things that I think of when I think of child protection is teaching them the skills they need in order to be healthy eaters, uh, making sure that policies in the classroom are at the best interest of the children. Um, are, are their home life and the routine at home, are they going to bed on time, getting up on time so that they can function properly during the day? Um, and if things aren't happening the way they are supposed to happen, we do have our mandatory reporting. And then we have to also look at COVID-19 school life afterwards. So with that in mind, um, we have, what I wanna talk about a little bit is this mask, okay? So, you know, you know, with the children these days, it's hard to keep things, even as adults, it's hard to keep this mask on all the time. It gets sweaty, it gets hot, especially in Oman, there's no AC outside, you know, so and the temperatures are over 100 degrees almost every day. And that's in Fahrenheit. If you're watching this from the other metric system countries, it's about 37, 38 every day. But this, this summer has been really mild. Last summer it got to like 50, oof, it was so hot. Okay, so, but this summer is still very hot when you're outside. You do sweat a lot, but it does cover this formal area here, right? Right, so there are some ways that I've found that it's easy to wear. And that doesn't hurt the ears too much because you do get used to it after a while. But this is something that children are going to have a hard time keeping the masks on. So we just have to make sure that these masks are on properly so the kids don't feel um weird about wearing them one thing that you can do about masks that i didn't actually include this in this idea is you can color on them okay they're not so hard to color so i have my markers back here and to make this more fun for the kids because i do believe 100 percent that color awakens the senses all right, so like if I were to color this mask, I'd lay it out flat, okay? And I would do a heart here and a heart here and maybe my name. But it might not work with watercolors, a little bit light, but M-A-R-I-S-S. -S. So when I put on my mask, my mask has my name, but you can't see because it's mirrored, okay? 
and it's got hearts on it, and it's just beautiful, and it's not going to hurt me because it's non-toxic, okay? But this might help the child feel a little bit safer if they can color it, right? So then you instruct them to put it on their ears like this. But you know, sometimes that's really big, and it lets in the air here, but in it, it's, it's too big for a child. Even if you, you strain, strain it there and everything, it's just, it's just too big for the kid. So some ways that you can shorten them, okay? They do have cloth ones now, but you can twist this here and twist this again. And of course you might need an adult to help you. But when you put it on, okay? You put it around the ears that way, right? It's made it a little bit smaller, okay? And when you put it down here, it's, it's a lot better in size. It's not so floppy now. There's another way that you can do it because these start to hurt the ears a lot. Okay, the tighter they are, they do start to hurt these ears after a while. So one thing that I found a doctor do it online is he took paper clips. Okay. It's a paper clip like this on each side, one on this side, one on this side. And he put it on his mouth, okay? And he would strap it behind, okay? So, and you can also do it before, probably it's easier because it'll take longer for you to do it that way because I'm not as coordinated. So now it becomes like a, a thing like this. And it doesn't, it doesn't hit the ears. So it doesn't hurt those kids' ears. And, then, and because they're kids, it's just easier to put it on and off. And that way it stays on. It doesn't move, all right? Then they can hit that thing. It makes it to the shape of their face. So it's much better, okay, but it's still really hot. And my daughter bought a cloth one. And I know the cloth ones just protect against dust and stuff. But at least for the kids, it gives them that extra protection they need to wear it inside school. Of course, always it's important to have our hand sanitizers. Sorry, excuse me. Okay. And give your hand sanitizer. All right. Make sure that it's at least 75 to 80% alcohol. Okay. All right, it, it, it'll kill the germs. So then you know you put your hand sanitizer on. Okay, every time, every time they wash your hands, put your hand sanitizer. Okay, and uh, I've bought other kinds too. I have it in my purse. This one's really nice. It's by uh, Dermo Viva. Okay, it's here, I think it's here in the Middle East only. I'm not sure because it's in Arabic, so maybe it's only in the Middle East. I don't have my glasses on, but I'm guessing yes. Oh yeah, UAE. This one's nice because it has aloe vera. Okay, so it does moisturize the hands as well. All right. And I think that's like 800 pesos or something. I'm not so expensive. All right, so I'm going to take this off because I always wanted to give you guys an, an idea about how we can enforce those in the school. I don't think, to be honest with you, that putting your kids in bubbles or those shields, <laughs> it's just, just their kids, you know, they still want that physical contact. They still want, they still need to get help. They need their kids, you know. So I am going to be careful. I will encourage the elbow bump and I'll encourage the high air fives and stuff. But if a child still comes up and gives me a hug, I'm gonna have to give it because that's just the way kids are. Um, so that's what I wanna talk about through the face masks of COVID. After school opens again, we will ensure that the masks go on. But um, that is one thing about child protection safeguarding that we need to pay attention to. All right, so I will end this now and I will come back to you to uh, finish the professional development. Any questions, let me know down below. Please don't forget to subscribe and like and share it with your friends and have them subscribe so that I can continue providing you amazing content, okay?